My colleague John that is calling from the Bay. So we are back to the West Coast with John and he will talk about flight sense technology that can really enable touchless button. So very, uh, let's say on time <laughs> for the difficult period that we are living. So John, I will turn to you if uh, you are connected and I see you here. Edo, I am, thank you very much for introducing me. And I'd like to talk to everyone about a touchless button. This is not a new sensor, but a new application for the sensor. Um, I'm from the SD Imaging Group. Uh, most of us are in Europe, but I'm in California. And uh, with that, we'd like to get started. We have a result. Oh, thank you. Um, about half of you have used the time of flight, and that, uh, and the rest of you want to know about it, which is great. And I'll spend a little more time on that slide as we get to it. But um, let me introduce the, the, the topic at the moment. Um, the applications for a touchless button are pretty varied, but it turns out during the day you touch an awful lot of things. You touch vending machines, you touch elevators, you touch parking meter buttons, you touch ATM screens, you touch all kinds of things. And they would be just a little bit better in this age of COVID if you could just come close to the button and not actually physically touch it. Um, we can enable this very easily. It's a sensor that's been around for a while and it's just um, we proved it works quite well, and uh, um, I'm going to show you how to do it. The key advantage to a touchless button is, A, you don't have to touch it. It's obviously very sanitary, but it also, when you clean it, you know, one quick swipe of a rag, there is no, um, no cracks or crevices. It's completely behind a solid piece of glass and you can just uh, or acrylic, and you can just wipe it down very quickly. It's very reliable, it's all solid state, there's no moving parts, and it's very secure. If you built an ATM out of one of these things, you could hit it with a hammer and it still wouldn't be a problem. Acrylic is a great material for being vandal proof and we can strike through it. So how does it work? For those of you who didn't know about time of flight, this little graphic here shows one photon going out of the emitter and hitting a target and coming back but that's not exactly how we use it. The emitter is a vertical cavity surface emitting laser. It's a, a Vixel and it shoots millions of photons out and hits that target. And when the sensors come fly or the photons come flying back, they're captured by a SPAD, a single photon avalanche diode that SD pretty much invented. And that stops the stopwatch. Knowing that time, you measure, the, you take the time, divide it by two, and multiply by the speed of light and you get the travel time. You get that answer in millimeters and it's pretty darn accurate. And with that, you can determine when the finger actually comes within a few millimeters or a few inches, depending on your application, of the button. So what can you do with it? Well, traditionally, these types of things um, do the G-detect on your phone. It does the autofocus assist on your phone but you can also use it to turn faucets on and off, open garbage cans, uh, even start a coffee maker if you wanted to. And oddly, there's a picture of a, a mirror there that the sensor can be used to determine how far your face is and adjust the brightness of the mirror, well, the light on the mirror clearly, um, and to see what's going on. But used in a different application, we can take the STM development kit that we have on our website and determine how to build a touchless button. So I'm gonna push a little video here. And show you how it works. As you see the, uh, maybe you don't see it. There you go. As you see my hand go up, down, back, forth, you can see how fast it is switching on, off, And all that works by shooting the photons out, detecting the hand is there, detecting the hand went away, and that's the, um, the way it works. In another mode, we can take the same thing and prove it works with dimming, should you want to do that. As my hand 
Come on, there we go. Thank you. As my hand comes in and out, watch the numbers go from 99 to 31. See it? And it determined how close my hand was, set a dust dimmer adjustment, and then moved my hand away. And it also works as an on-off switch. So under the covers, how does it work? The red line in this graph shows 255, the artificial maximum. And as my hand comes closer and closer, you can see the red line drops closer and closer to zero. And then as I take my hand away, it drops back to 255. I took this graph in a bright California sun outside. And as you might well imagine, the, um, uh, that's the worst case possible. And the little black line here that you see is the signal strength coming from my hand. But what you see are four very quick button presses. In a different graph, this is indoor. This is a lot easier to do. And you can see somewhere around, uh, as on my finger gets closer, somewhere around 15 or 20 millimeters, you can kind of see where my, you can actually see the finger getting close. Outdoors, you pretty much say it's close, but much more accurate indoors. And um, again, four simple button presses. If you are considering a high voltage, uh, like a light switch, ST's got a uh, development board. This one will plug underneath the bottom of that setup I just showed you. And it has the ability to control up to three lights. Not sure how you'd actually implement that, but that'd be the way to build a mock-up of a uh, light switch. And you could be testing in a matter of hours. All my flight sense, time of flight sensors can do this. They can do tap detection, double tap detection, swipe direction, level control. Uh, additional features, you can do left and right swipes if you use the uh, more advanced VL53L1 or L1CB in a multi-zone scanning mode. And all of them can do different ranges. So basically from the smallest to the largest, you can get distance. And I'm not sure why you'd need a switch that works at four meters, but I suppose you can do it. Gesture recognition is good for music control, uh, IoT functions, uh, hands-free Bluetooth on your, on your uh, uh, earphones, and VR glasses were used for that, and it works in all these applications. If you're trying to do a right-left uh, swipe, you can see, uh, maybe you can't see, it's pretty small, but as you can see my hand swiping back and forth, there's a zone one and a zone two, and these Two zones allow you to detect whether the hand was swiped to the right or to the left. If you don't want to use the um, if you don't want to use the uh, development board we have uh, out of the imaging group, you can buy a discovery kit uh, available from ST, and it has all the sensors that you'd want to use in addition to my time of flight, which is that little circle there in the lower left. And with that, perhaps we have some questions. Okay, yes, uh, John, you have been uh, quick uh, and uh, I think the videos work uh, very well. So, you know, this was also the beauty <laughs> to try videos with a live event. Uh, and maybe if I just can add, uh, John, this IoT Discovery Kit, uh, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, these provide not only all the sensors, including time of flight, but uh, basically we are providing also the sensor to cloud connectivity, right? What has been described yes, before. Exactly. So perfect. So people can really bring uh, time of flight uh, sensor data to the cloud uh, easily thanks to this IoT discovery kit. Yes, 